Dawn breaks on the first day of May over West Rail's large marshalling yards at Forestfield. Steam returns once more from its enforced six-month break during the hot summer months. To launch the new season, the Hotham Valley Railway has arranged for radio broadcaster Ted Bull to host his morning breakfast show from on board a steam special as they circled Perth and Fremantle by rail. By the time they reach Ashfield for the second time, the empty stock from the transcontinental Indian Pacific is already making its way back to Forestfield, four days after leaving Sydney, nearly 4,000 kilometres away. The next day, W908, dwelling up, approaches Ashfield once more, this time heading east herself with the senior citizen's 2J steam explorer along the scenic Avon Valley route. Special activities have been laid on by the townsfolk of 2J for visitors' entertainment. While 1951-built mountain type by Bayer Peacock at their Gorton Works in England works another 12 kilometres along the valley line to Avon Yard on the outskirts of Northern for turning.
with a little assistance in shunting the extra water tank, the W-class locomotive proceeds to the dual gauge turntable, shared by narrow and standard gauge diesels, such as this L-class working eastwards with the grain train back along the valley. at West 2J to allow the faster standard gauge prospector service to pass first, dwelling up makes brisk progress back to Perth. Lamp twinkling in the late afternoon as she crosses the junction from Forest Field at Success Hill Guildford. steam horn excursion takes us along this normally freight only line around the suburb to the coast on the Indian Ocean of Fremantle with its dock complexes. Rejoining the passenger lines once more, through Claremont, past the showgrounds and Douglas. an 86 kilometer circle of the city, allowing for a second run in the afternoon.
travelling south to Pinjarra, the base for the Hotham Valley Railway, two W class are heading our train out through the lush dairy farming areas to the coal mining town of Collie. Even during winter months, a fire watcher follows on the grade to the Lunenburg Valley. Much of the track work has gone, but the old roundhouse at Collie remains defiant testimony to the once great railway here. locomotive crews just don't get the practice they used to at lining up the turntable first time these days. Returning along the magnificent Lunenburg Valley into the setting sun gives us the opportunity to enjoy the beauty of this part of Western Australia.
Hotham Valley's fleet of four W-Class 482 locomotives are joined by PM706, a North British-built Pacific, saved for preservation by the Apex Club of Narogen and in steam today after nearly 20 years out of service. In the early morning, she's prepared for duty along with W908 drilling up in the cold morning air. Running light engine to Forestfield, the pair are turned before working a much publicised special to Ginger. A local stops at Guildford before another special gets away first behind preserved XA class 1402 Targari on this glorious Sunday morning. Media interest is all on the steam engines as the Pacific leads the W across the Swan River at Upper Swan. DB class on freight clears the junction at Millenden before the pair return tender first off the old Midland railway line in the afternoon. beneath the wires for the new electric services at Guildford. York is the first major town along the old Great Southern Railway's line to Albany and is another destination, often requiring tender first running as far as Avon Yard on the journey home. W908 Dwelling Up returns on one such trip from York, 
the state's oldest inland town, first settled in 1831. Crossing the Avon River, the line rejoins the main line on a new link, constructed after the arrival of the standard gauge completely changed the track layout at Northern. Another operator of steam excursions is the Australian Railway Historical Society's West Australian branch, with their DD class 464 tank locomotive built in the Government Railway's own workshops in Midland in 1946. DD 592 has to suffer the indignity of diesel assistance from one of Westrail's A class locomotives in order to manage the seesawing grades on the line to Kalindri. Designed for suburban passenger duties with trains of 200 tonnes, their trailing load was limited to just 105 tonnes with the arrival of the diesel rail cars in 1954, just to adhere to the new schedules. So this run out into the country through the Victoria Plains, stopping briefly at Bolgart, gives the DD a chance for a good stretch. Although the A-Class sounds like it's doing most of the work.
fire spotter follows a train for lineside fires. A little pessimistic, perhaps, under the circumstances. The townsfolk of Kalingari turn out to witness the first steam locomotive to reach here in 30 years, while the crew engage themselves in a little fly shunting to adjust the position of the coal wagon in the train, the DD's bunker capacity of just five tonnes being insufficient for a run this far from Perth. Rejoining the main line just before Horseshoe Curve near West Tujay, a flock of Goliaths are startled by this strange combination appearing just before they roost for the night. In the 1960s, a similar class of Baltic tank locomotive, the unique UT number 664, was fired by oil. Seen here at East Perth. This tank locomotive was also the only one to be painted in the large green of the tender engines instead of plain black. Next to parade before the camera is PM720, one of a class of 35 Pacific locomotives used on good services. The distinctive Y-form spokes on the coupled wheels introduced by Frederick Mills, the chief mechanical engineer in the 1940s. Another Pacific of the PR class, also known as Rivers, simmers on shed while a DD tank gets away first to the city to work a train, leaving PM720 and the driver of another DD to fuss about the shed yard before a second PM leads a North British built trio including FS452, a 480 and 720 again.
One of the powerful 24 V-class engines arrives while the DD heads for the city station. August 30th, 1970, saw the unique sight of visiting New South Wales 3801, running parallel with the now-preserved DD-592 from Spearwood to Leighton Beach, near Fremantle. Enthusiasts turned out in force once again to commemorate the end of steam operations with one of a number of specials to Collie. The depot at this time already given over to the storage of dead steam locomotives. Double-headed by a V-class and W943, now preserved in the town, strangely, is number 948. A group now known as the Hotham Valley Railway was formed in 1974 to run steam again using four of the W-class locomotives such as W945 Banksydale and W920, originally named by the group as Sir Ross McClarty, and runs up the hill to Dwellingham. Two steam locomotives not officially retired from service are the two G-class engines Leshenot Lady and Kumbana Queen, retained for special runs such as this trip on the 1st of March 1981, celebrating the centenary of the railway between Fremantle and Guildford. We see the pair near Bassendine and crossing the Swan River at Guildford.
The last of the peak hour locomotive hauled passenger trains on the Armadale line was to come to an end during 1990 as electrification approached. The last week of the service was to see the three English Electric C-Class as the favoured motive power. Kenwick flyover, a good location for viewing some of the evening peak trains, including the disappearing ADX rail cars, still at work among the more recent ADL sets, glinting in the sunlight. The new image of West Rail services in the 90s is captured by the Australian diesel rail cars on the Bunbury route, suburban electrics, and P-class diesels on freight, such as the Bauxite train near Jarrodale. History can still be recalled in this scene 622 kilometres from Perth in the goldfields. All through the night of the 21st of March 1907, a special train carrying divers and rescue equipment was racing over the line to save the miner Varischetti, who had become trapped in the flooded Westralia East Extension mine at Bonnie Vale. Using three steam locomotives in relays, they cut a full four hours off the regular journey time then of 17 hours. Today's prospect of diesel services cover a similar route in a little over six hours. One of the original three engines can still be seen on a plinth outside Centrepoint Shopping Centre in Midland. A pair of South African two-foot gauge locomotives were imported in the 1980s to work on the Bennett Brook Railway within Whiteman Park near Perth. Yeah. One of the NG15 class, number 123, will haul our train today around the four and a half kilometre loop of track through the bushland settings of the park. We were getting some from uh, Noble and uh, ran out of money at the moment and
Many of the line's buildings came from the West Australian Government Railways, such as the old Fremantle Box A here at Central Station. A busy service is maintained with trains every 30 minutes, the NG15 being well suited to the line. named with much wildlife in the park for train crews and passengers to watch out for on their journeys. Heading south once more to the port of Bunbury, seen in the distance where G-Class Leshenot Lady is making a special run from the inlet. She's named after the inland town of Donnybrook, famous for its green gold, Granny Smith apples. The stop is made at the small farming town of Boyanup to take on some much needed water and to take part in the agricultural fair. Housed and maintained here by society members, the water tower still survives for her to replenish her tender but only after any dirty water or frogs have been cleared from the pipework first.
was first taken up in this area in 1842, when a party of four Irishmen settled there, and the area was called appropriately enough Irish Town. When the railway arrived in 1895, the name was changed to Donnybrook. National Lady was built some three years later to standard Bayer Peacock design by James Martin and Company in South Australia as a 260. A 460 was soon developed as the earlier 260s showed a tendency to come off at speed. One of these later engines, built by Dubbs of Glasgow in 1897, is G123, known as the Kumbana Queen. Now used on Saturday afternoons by the Hotham Valley Railway during the steam season, from their station at Dwelling Up into the Jarrow Forest at Edmillion. This attractive tourist train runs tender first on the outward trip, often slipping badly even in dry weather on the steep grades of Holyoke Bank. Heritage path has been created for the passengers to enjoy at Edmillin while the loco crew prepare their engine for the return journey back through lush green forest in winter. But in summer it can be tender dry, as in January 1961, when severe bushfires swept this area, destroying the old sawmilling towns of Hollyoak, Dwelling Up, and Nangabrook. Only Dwelling Up was ever rebuilt.
timber mill here was established about the time of the Great War, with its jarrah being used not only for railway sleepers all around the world, but also for paving blocks in many cities, including London. Most Sundays during the winter and spring, this is the destination for the Hotham Valley Railway's Forest Ranger trains over the 97 kilometres from Perth. The comfortable ex-South African Riverland coaches are hauled by one of the distinctive XA-class diesels as far as Pinjarra. Here the diesel comes off and two of the railway's 482W-class locomotives are attached for the 24-kilometre run up the hill into the Darling Ranges. Both crews have a chance for a chat, but the climb will not be easy, even with two engines. After taking the single line star for De Sandra, the climb begins, as the ruling grade is 1 in 30 almost all the way to dwelling at. This is West Australia's steepest railway. out to check the operation of the sanders on the wheels as they fight for traction.
the two road crossings on the Williams Road, the pair head off into the forest again, continuing the climb to the summit, where barbecues are already alight and waiting to greet hungry passengers as they arrive at lunchtime. Both engines are turned on a triangle while the smell of barbecued sausages and steaks fills the air. One locomotive then returns light engine, leaving the other to head our train back down the hill after a great day out with steam. <laughs> 